So I want to show the problem that my add-on has with dealing with animations and physics bodies in Godot for the import pipeline. So let's just drop in a cube and let's pretend it's going to be like a door or something, something, something that you would want to animate. Okay. So your first instinct as a modeler or in blender, you might want to put the origin here, right? So set the origin to a 3d cursor. If I can remember how to do that. Um, and of course that resets your pivot, right? To be right on that point, which is perfect. So then you might do something like, uh, go to the dope sheet and create a new action. So we could keyframe this frame on rotation, and then we could keyframe, I don't know, something else, right? So this is all fine in the blender side of things, right? You get this nice little animation. And let me show if you just export this, right? So we're going to use the pipeline. We're assuming that's kind of, that's kind of what you're doing. You're using my pipeline add on. If we export this, jump into Godot, and then drop in that node, this will work. Like there's no issues with using just a mesh that has no collisions on it. That's all fine. And it's not, my add-on's not doing anything here. This is just the default uh, GLTF behavior. Um, the problem comes in when you try to throw a collision on this. So if I try to throw a box static body, this is all default settings. We just hit set. The first thing you notice is that it resets the origin to the boundary box. And obviously this is going to cause problems that animation. First of all, the animation is not at the right pivot point. And then there's a second problem. I'll show you that if we export again and we get the update, um, now we get this couldn't action, couldn't resolve track cube. So the animation is actually broken. And the reason it's broken is because the add on behind the scenes is reparenting that mesh to a static body and it's adding that cube collision, right? So how do we fix this? So let's kind of start over here. Um, I'm going to unlink that action. I'm going to leave that origin where it is. And what I want to do at this point where the 3d cursor is, I'm actually going to drop in an empty. So let's do an empty plane axis, right? And that's kind of right at the pivot we want. And what you can do is you can parent that, that door or whatever it is, control P parent it to this empty. You can actually animate that empty. So what I'll do is I'll create a new action. I'll drop in a keyframe here and then maybe a keyframe over here on rotation. And so that animation is fine. So this kind of kills two birds with one stone. It should fix both of our issues. So just to fully explain what's going on here, we have the cube that's parented to the empty, the empty we're going to rotate. Um, and the cube ultimately has, you know, this custom data you can hit, you can hit uh, display add on data and you'll see the box collision details are there. So let's go ahead and export this. And so what do we get now? We get a collision that actually works. So this is not, you know, there's no changes to my add on to do this. This is just a workflow fix, um, that will allow you to animate static bodies accurately. Um, there's different ways to deal with this too. I was chatting with someone about it. And another thing you could do instead of using an empty, you could have an actual hinge mesh. So let's take a quick look at how that would look. Um, I'm going to just unparent this. We're going to do delete this guy and then let's drop in another cube and let's pretend this one is going to be like uh, a hinge, right? So this is going to be a hinge and we can do the same kind of thing. We can parent the cube to that hinge and I can use that same animation I just had, right? Cause it's just rotating. That's all it is. All it's doing. Um, and this would work too. So you don't need to use an empty. You might have a hinge and this would be a door and we can go ahead and export that. So something's not quite happy with the collision shape there. We'll see in a second, but you get the same kind of behavior where the animation about that hinge works fine. Um, so this is a nice little workaround to the animation player kind of problem. Let's see what we have going on with the hinge here. Yeah. So possibly the issue here is that this hinge has a scale on it. So let's go ahead and apply this scale. And then we notice that this guy's scale is applied as a well. So we export this and there we go. So there is something kind of deep within the add on. I, I can't remember what it is right now, but that hinge object needs to have a scale applied as well. 
And then once all, once all that is done, then of course you get animation and you know, we're really, what we're doing is we're animating a collision. We're moving a static body so that this is, you know, it represents in the real world what that, you know, the collision for that door. Okay. So I hope this was helpful. Um, let me know if you have any thoughts or comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.